Hey church, I hope you're doing well. Let me ask you a question. Do you know that you are changing? Do you know that you are? Right now, in this moment, at this time, you're changing. It's pretty much fact as far as I can tell. You are not the same person today that you were a year ago or that you were five years ago or 10 years ago or 15 or 20. If you look back over the course of your life, your life has changed. Who you are has changed to some degree or another. You are different now than you were in the past. And the same is true looking forward. If you were able to look at your life and who you are a year from now, you'd be different. Uh, two years, you'd be different. Five years, different. Ten years, different. But some of the core things might remain. You know, your, your name might stay the same. Uh, who you are deep down might be the same. But the fact is, is, is you're changing. You're an ever-changing being. The question is, are you changing for the good? Or are you going the other way? There's not really much room for plateaus or stagnation or anything different. It's either are you you moving on towards perfection? Are you growing in Christ? Are you getting closer to the Lord? Are you moving on in grace, in love, in mercy? Are you getting to be more like Jesus? Are you growing? Or are you decaying? Are you falling away? from the things that God has called you to, to do, to be? Are you falling away from the life that God has invited you to live? Are, are you withering in your faith, in, in your spirit, and who God has made you to be? The fact is, is, is you're changing. You're different now than you were before, and you're different now than you will be in the future. The question becomes, in which way? Are, are, are you growing? Or are you falling? Uh, are you being renewed? Or are you not? Last week we, we talked about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, the, how the death and resurrection of Jesus changes everything. And it's by that resurrection that we are able to be changed for the good. And my hope is, is that we continue here after Easter, as we continue to be resurrection people, Easter people, that we would recognize that we're changing and that we would desire to be changed for the good, that every aspect of our life would become uh, subject to the kingdom of God and that we would be used in his kingdom and that we would be strengthened and renewed and restored and that our eyes would be fixed on the things that are important. And we would recognize that the alternative is not so great. You see, for some of us, change comes across as a four-letter word. You know, it comes across as this thing that, that's negative. You can't talk about change. That might make me uncomfortable. That, that might cause me to not know what I'm supposed to do. I can't invite change into my life. Well, really, you don't have a choice. Your life is changing whether you invite it or not. It's going to be different in the future than it is right now and it was in the past whether you like it or not. Change comes. It happens. We just need to be in the right frame of mind and have the right spirit so that it happens in a way that's positive, that encourages growth, that encourages us to be renewed and restored and rejuvenated and read all of these things into the kingdom of God. Change is not a, a four-letter word if it's change in the right direction. You know, some of us, we think, eh, that's not true. But, but what would happen if you took a couch and you moved into your house, say, uh, when you were, were fresh out of college or, or right out of high school or whatever, you, you got your first house and you found the perfect couch and you knew the place the couch was going to stay. You put it up against the wall right in that spot and you never touched it again. That's the couch's place. That's where it belongs. It cannot change. There's no other option for that couch in that room. 
you can't stand change so much that you leave it there. What happens if you just leave it in that spot for 10 years? How nice do you think that couch would be if it was never lifted up and swept under or dusted? How, how great a shape do you think that couch would be in after 10 years? 20? 30? 40? After a certain period of time, whether you touched it or not, that couch would not look so nice. It would be uh, filled up with dust and cobwebs and spiders. Things would probably chew it. It would decay and fall apart. That couch would change even if you never changed it. The same is true of us. Even if we think, I'm just going to stay in the same spot, the same place that I've been comfortable in for so long, I'm not going to move or grow. The fact is, is you're going to go the opposite way. We need invigoration. We need fresh change, fresh life breathed into us all the time. We're continually moving forward towards Christ, inviting change of God into our lives. This is the, the attitude that Paul had, and he expresses it in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, starting in verse 16. Listen to what Paul says. Though outwardly we are wasting away, Though outwardly our, our bodies are, are falling apart, our physical being is, is headed towards decay, even if you haven't met your peak in terms of, you know, your strength or your speed or your, or your age, even if there's still a, a little bit of room for growth for you physically, in reality, you're changing towards decay. You're headed towards death. Life is is finite on this earth as we know it. There will be a point in which this will go away. And Paul says, even though that's happening, we're, we're wasting away outwardly. Inwardly, we're being renewed day by day. Paul had grasped the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit and what God had had done for him and so inwardly Paul continued to grow to be renewed day by day so that the outward stuff it didn't make much of a difference to him because inwardly he knew he was getting to be more like the man that Christ had created him to be he continues for our light and our momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all the, the, the present suffering, the pains that we're going through, our, our struggles that we endure right now, they're achieving growth in us, in our spirit. And they're light and momentary compared to eternity. So we would rather go through those things now so that we can experience more joy in Jesus. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. See, a lot of times we fix our eyes on the things that we can see that make us comfortable. We see a particular way that we have done church all of our lives and, and it's the way that we want to continue to do it for the rest of our life and, and no room for change in that structure, that model whatsoever. But that can be a, a limiter to what God wants to do. It, it can create a barrier between us and where God wants us to be. If, if God says, hey, why don't you, you try something out just a little bit different? And we say, no, that, that, that's not good. And, and sometimes we, we see change in our life and think, no, I can't step out of my routine. I can't step out of my comfort zone. It might create problems for me that I, I don't like. We, we put our hands up against change and we fight against it. And, and, and God doesn't always want that for us because he knows that, that if we're fighting his spirit, we're going the opposite direction. And so Paul said, I'm not fixed on all those externals. I'm not fixing my eyes on all, all those things that, that are seen, the way the outward things decay the way I, I have to suffer in this life. But I'm fixing my eyes on something that is unchanging, on the kingdom of God. 
and I'm fixing my eyes so much on Jesus and, and the change that he wants to do in me that everything else seems light and momentary because he's making me new. He's renewing me, refreshing me on the inside and, and my soul is being prepared for eternity as I share this good news with others, as I proclaim the good news of Jesus. I'm being changed to be more like Christ. And that's what Paul wanted. And that's what Paul wanted for the church in Corinth. And that's what Paul would want for us as well. So as we continue to be people of Easter, to be people who are resurrected with Christ, to be people who are changed, let's know that that change keeps happening and that that's not always a bad thing. In fact, change can be a very good thing if it's aimed in the right direction. And if we think we're staying still and nothing's going to change, we're really headed the wrong way. Well, friends, change is not a four-letter word, especially when it's in the hands of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May we be willing to be changed for him. May we be willing to be transformed for him. May we be uh, made in his image so that others would know his love and be changed as well. For God's sake and glory. Amen.